This is the new Jumper T14. It is what I class as their new mid-range sized radio. It sits smaller than some of the larger handsets on the market, but certainly not a gamepad style radio, and is very similar to handsets such as the TBS Mambo and the Radio Master Boxer. Now today, I'm going to give you an overview of this radio, share with you my thoughts on this handset, and tell you if I think you should consider buying this or not. Now, just to be clear up front, Jumper did send me this radio over for free. However, they have not paid me to make this video. They've not seen this video before it's been published. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Okay, so the T14, this is Jumper's answer to the Radio Master Boxer or their own version of an Express LRS version of the TBS Mambo. Now, this radio is Express LRS, it is based off Edge TX, and the version they've sent me here is the T14 Hall CNC edition, which is running the Express LRS 2.4 gigahertz. Now, it will look very similar to those radios, so you shouldn't be too surprised what class this radio is in. If we open the lid to the box, inside you will find a set of instructions, and then you will find this case. Now, I did open this just now, so that's why it does look like it's been opened, because basically it has. So they do include with this edition this nice sort of semi-rigid soft case. It's got jumper on the front, it's got metal zips, and if I open it up, you can then see the radio inside, and it has these little elasticated Velcro straps that hold the radio down. Also included in the case, you will find a couple of accessories. So we have a strap as well as a USB-C cable. And then there is also a little bag here with some additional springs as well as a little QA leaflet. Now, this radio is very similar in shape and size to those other models. I will put them all next to each other later on just to give you an overview. When you get it, it does have this packaging on top of the gimbals just to give them some protection. Now, everything here is going to be very familiar if you have seen those radios. So, we have our gimbals, which they say are the CNC Hall gimbals. We have our display at the bottom. The display on this, though, is not LCD. It is an OLED display. We'll take a look at that a bit more later on. We've got our control buttons down here for the Edge TX operating system, as well as a roller wheel over here. This roller wheel and buttons, though, is plastic. There's no metal to be found. We then have our trim buttons down here. We have our power button in the middle. And then at the top, we have our switches as well as our potentiometers. Just like those other radios, switch layout is the same. So there is two two position switches, one on each side, two three position switches, and then two rotating potentiometers with a center indent. If we then lift the radio up, on the top, you will find a momentary corner button as well as a latching corner button, just like you find on the other radios. There is then these two little blanking plugs here. We've got our antenna in the second. You can see, as I've said, this is the 2.4 gigs Express LRS edition. The antenna is folding and it is rotating as well, allowing you quick and easy way of changing it from horizontal to vertical polarization. If we flip the radio over, on the back, you will find a built-in plastic stand stroke carry handle. This is a plastic handle. It does feel a little bit flimsy, but it does do a good enough job for carrying the radio. There is a full-size JR bay on the back of this radio as well. So if we just undo that, that will let us in where you can put in any module you want. So for instance, this comes with the 1 Watt Express LRS edition at 2.4 gigs. But if you wanted to put a 900 megs Express LRS module in, you could. Or you could even put your Crossfire module in there if you wanted to. Then below that, you can see there's a little fan grill for the built-in cooling. And then at the bottom, we've got the battery bay door. And if I slide that off, you will then see we have our battery holder. Just like many of the other recent radios from Jumper, this will take two 21700 cells, not 18650s, although you could squeeze 18650s in there if you wanted to. I have done that. And this will actually come out if you give it a hard enough 
pull, allowing you to put your own battery in if you want to. It's held in place with foam at the moment. You can see then you can lift that out and that then gives you visibility down to a normal battery input there. And below this, you can see quick and easy access to the battery for the built-in HTX system. Looking around the rest of the radio, there are these grips on the side. These are a rubber material, just like you find on the Boxer, that just offer a bit of extra grip. And the main shell of the radio is just this sort of greeny blue plastic that feels okay, feels good, no major complaints there. Doesn't feel the best in the world and certainly doesn't feel the worst. Looking on the top of the radio, you will find some I.O. So we have our USB-C port up here for charging the radio as well as updating the firmware. And then we have a trainer port over here as well. Now, Jumper do say that USB port on the top supports up to 10 watts of DC input. And you can see here, testing it on one of my portable power stations, we've got 11 watt of output. So overall, looking about spot on. Now, as I've said, the version they've sent me here is the whole version. I can definitely feel those external parts of the gimbal are metal, although some of these internal parts do feel like plastic. I think we're going to have to take a closer look at that in a bit more detail later on. What I will say is, whilst they're labelled CNC gimbals, they don't appear to be all metal like we have seen from some other brands. Now, just looking at these gimbals in a little bit more detail and talking about the stick ends. Now, these are what they're calling their CNC gimbals, and I will be talking about that a lot more later on. With regards to the quality of the gimbal, they feel okay. They feel nice and smooth. There is, though, a bit of flex in these, to say the least. I can push down in the corners there, and you can see... Let me just move my finger... It, it is not a hard stop like you get on some other gimbals. There's definitely a little bit of flex there when you push it to the extremes. With regards to the stick ends, these are adjustable. They're very sharp, I'll be honest. I'm not a big fan of the stick ends that Jumper have been using on their radios. It's the same stick end on this as they used on the T20. It's really quite sharp. I like a stick end that's less about sharpness and more about sort of plenty of little grip areas, more like gnarled, like you can get from some of the other manufacturers. It is adjustable, so you can unscrew it out, although it isn't toolless adjustable there is a little allen key in the middle there that you're going to need to adjust sorry there's a little hex screw in the middle that you're going to need to adjust to hold it in place to adjust this in the field you'd have to have that with you because whilst you can unscrew it there's no way to lock it in place without having the little allen wrench to move that thumb screw down to lock it on the shaft you can though take these off and they are replaceable which is good news if you wanted to as i've said they are quite sharp if you just look around there you've got the spikes on the edge yes there's plenty of grip on them on the sides but i think they definitely need a little bit of wearing down compared to how they come from the factory what there is though is plenty of adjustment length on them as well now there are bits of these gimbals that are metal and there are bits that are plastic and we'll take a look at that more when we do the teardown. Now, as I've mentioned, this radio does come with Edge TX installed as standard. It has all of the usual options and features as a result of that. So you've got all of your usual model settings, everything with related to model selection and all of the usual controls. This display at the bottom is really very nice to look at. As I mentioned earlier, it's actually OLED rather than LCD. It is a 2.4 inch display or 2.42 exactly. And it features a resolution of 1 to 8 by 64. So whilst it's no more resolution than you may find on some of the other radios, it is an OLED display and it is very, very nice to look at. It has a much nicer overall contrast than what you would find on an LCD equivalent. Now, as I mentioned, this is the 2.4 gigs Express LRS, and this radio will do up to one watt of RF output, and you can select that via the Express LRS Lua script. You simply go in all the way down, and you can select that maximum of one watt of RF output. It has 
all of the usual modes available in Express LRS as well. So we can put that back down to 25 a moment. And if we go back, you can see we've got all of the packet rate options. So 50 hertz, 100, 150, all the way up to the very fast modes, including F1000. Unfortunately, with regards to the RF module on this, though, there is no backpack functionality. It is something we've seen from Jumper before. Backpack hasn't been a feature that they've introduced. Hopefully, this is something that they will add on their radios in the future. But if you are someone that does need that backpack functionality with Express LRS, you would need to modify this radio. There is a port there for you to be able to do it, but you're not going to have it out the door. Now, something else about the T14, which is quite interesting that I've not seen on any of the other radios like this, is the fact that you can actually replace these corner buttons. Jumper also have this little kit available that allows you to swap out these buttons for actual switches. Now, if I just open the pack that they sent me, what we have in here is some additional two position switches, two rockers, you've got two twos, and then you've got these little covers that would replace the push buttons on the corners. You've then got the nuts for them as well. And what it allows you to do is replace that corner sunken in switch and have a proper traditional toggle switch. Now I think this is actually a really nice little feature. And whilst I wouldn't replace this one, this one is largely useless for me. And I think a toggle on that corner could be quite handy. So I'm going to do that as part of the teardown in a minute. Now the T14 is obviously very similar to radios such as the Radio Master Boxer as well as the TBS Mambo. It is also quite a different radio than the T20 that we saw before. And what we're going to do next is do a bit of a comparison between them. So putting the three of these side by side. Now we've got the T20 the new T14, as well as the Radio Master Boxer. Now, size and shape-wise, the T14 is very much in the same camp as the Boxer. Although it is a similar radio to the T20, this year is the T20 Gemini Edition. This has that dual 2.4 gigs Express LRS module. The standard T20 will do up to one watt of RF power on Express LRS, just like this, whereas the Gemini version only does 500 milliwatts. This, though, does have a much bigger screen than you see on the T20. This one, though, is still OLED and it does look very, very nice. And it is more on par with what we've got on the Boxer. Now, I just wanted to put the T20 next to it just to give you an idea of how the radio is on sizing. But they're not really in the same class. This radio sits really in a class of its own because there's nothing I can think of that is like this. Whereas this is very much in this class, like this the Mambo. This sits really in its own area. It's not like these. It's not like the Pocket. It's really not like anything else. It's a full width radio. It's definitely full size, but actually, if we put it on its side, it isn't any wider than these. It's just shorter, and that's all you're really gaining on this radio compared to what you're getting here. The real comparison, though, is going to be between the Boxer. Now, I'm not really going to show the Mambo here because really today there's only one reason to choose a Mambo, and that's if you absolutely want Tracer built into a radio. There is no good reason to buy a Mambo if you want Crossfire or if you want anything else on a JR Bay because you don't have the full capabilities of that JR Bay. You have the limitations on the gimbals as well. As a result of that, my opinion is firmly only choose a Mambo if you're going to want a radio with Tracer built in. Otherwise, you want to be considering one of these two. Now, when you do put them side by side, the T14 is a little bit smaller. It is much closer to the Mambo in size. The Boxer is a little bit chunkier around the edges. Both of these radios have full-size gimbals. Both of them have pretty much the same size displays. You've got more buttons on the Boxer with regards to the Edge TX functionality. So you've got a full suite of buttons. You've got return, page up, page down, and telemetry. Whereas on this, you've got the combination buttons. But everything else is the same. Two two-position switches, two three-positions, two potentiometers. You've then got your uh, trims 
and then you've got your corner buttons at the top. Something that you don't have though on this T14 is these individual mode buttons that you see along here. The Boxer has these selectable mode options that do allow you for fixed wing use, for instance, to easily set modes on Ardrapilot or just use it for setting individual outputs on a channel. You don't have this on these radios, unfortunately, so you're gonna have to put up with the switches that you've got. Whilst it's got all of the same other hardware, it does make that nice little feature. Now at this point I've already done the modification here and I'll show this a bit more later on in the video on swapping that momentary button out for this button here but I have left the latching button on this corner. I will say that the corner button on the T14 is nicer than the corner button on the Radio Master Boxer. If I just pop them up on the sides you can see it's a bigger button actually and it goes further down the side of the radio it's more on the corner whereas this button is more on the top this is definitely on the shoulder of the radio and if i just put them side by side it's definitely more comfortable what you find on the boxer is you you feel that ridge there with your finger when you're pushing the button in it's not a hundred percent comfortable whereas the corner button on this radio is you feel very much that you're pressing the corner. Putting them in hand side by side, um, gimbal position for me feels about the same. It's a bit more of a stretch actually on the boxer. This is obviously full size gimbals and these are the AGO ones. These are not the standard gimbals. These are the full CNC gimbal. We will talk about the CNC gimbal on this a bit more later on. Um, what I will say is the, the boxer does feel more of a stretch to the center, definitely more of a stretch to the center than it is on the T14. They're both very comfortable in hand. Plastics feel about the same, maybe, I'd say may, maybe this feels a little bit cheaper, just a little bit, not a lot. I certainly have no complaints over the plastics on this, they just, don't quite feel as quality as the Radio Master ones, but other than that, they are very much a similar radio. So let's take a look at what this radio is actually like inside. So we're going to need to tear it down. Now I haven't actually looked at how we do this. There are rubber grips here. I'm going to lift them up and see if the screws are under that. It also gives you an indication of how easy these come off. I just flip that out. You can see they're held in place just like that. There does appear to be something there that might be a screw. What you don't have is a lot of view of access to the back of the gimbals looking at that. What we do have though is a screw here, two screws up there. So what I'm not sure is if they are all the same that actually allow you to get into the printer. Let's take that off as well. Now what I don't know is if it's just these two. Let's also get our battery bay out as well and just take a look at if there's anything in here. I did end up using 18650s for my testing on this. That unplugs like that. There's no, no screws in there. So what we're going to do is go for these two, these two, and let's see what happens. Okay, so let's just drop them over. We've got two smaller screws at the top that's those two and then those ones are silver and then you've got two black ones down there is that the radio oh yeah it is just those two that is then the radio ready to come apart it really is as easy as that so whereas i thought there was something there there's definitely screw bosses there but there's no screws in them now if we open it up very carefully there is cables that go across from the top to the bottom. Let me just flip that up there for you. Right, we've got two cables that go to the Express LRS module at the back. If I flip it like that, I'm going to remove them from the main PCB side. So you've got this one here from this top little board for the JR Bay, which goes to the right hand port. So that's the one I'm going to pop off first. And then we've got the one that goes underneath to the Express LRS module, which goes to the left hand port like that. And there, once they're free, you can separate the halves. 
Just note, as you are taking it apart, these little rubber bungs, which were at the top for additional antenna mounts, will come free as well. So you want to make sure that you don't lose them. Looking around this side of the radio, first of all, so we have our main processor board down here. You've got like an I.O. board up here that goes to that. And then we've got our gimbals and switches. There are a lot less boards in this than we saw inside the T20. It's a far more condensed design. If we look around, we've got our STM32 down there, which is a 407. That is the main SOC. We've got our battery input, our battery, which is nice and easily accessible without taking the radio apart. I do like the fact that that is the case. We then have our gimbals. We've got our top little I.O. board here. You can see that there is some signs of soldering there and there for the potentiometers that are on the other side and then all the switches are on little wires that come over to the plugs what's nice to see is that everything is glued in place so you can see that on all of the switches so that offers some strain relief on the wires and then everything here is cable tied up nicely no complaints at all the build quality actually looks really good down here you've then got that little cable that comes over for the display that comes in there and then there's this sort of link cable that goes between these two boards and then there is a jumper underneath you can't see it but down by there there's like a big pin header jumper that goes down between the two PCBs as well. We've then got our two buttons in the corners. You can see them, they're screwed in place. They're not just held in place. We're gonna replace the momentary one in a minute and we'll take a look at how to do that as we move through. Now, just taking a closer look at the gimbals, they call these their CNC gimbals, but look, there is a lot of plastic here. It is clear that there are some metal parts. What I'm gonna do is get one of these out in a minute. We're gonna need to get that switch out over there. So we'll take out one of the gimbals and just have a bit of a closer look at it. These though are the hall gimbals. As you can see there is the PCB with the hall effect sensor. The wire for that goes over through the bearings in the center and out, which is good to see, to this other PCB. And then that goes down to the board via that little connector down there, nice and easy. And then you've got four screws, one in each corner that hold it in place. So, to take a closer look at this gimbal, now, there's a lot to like here, but I also have mixed feelings over it, because when I see the word CNC gimbal, my expectation is what we saw from the likes of Radiomaster with a gimbal that is fully all metal. I'm not saying that there can't be the odd plastic part, but if we take a look at this gimbal, so, we've got metal here, we've got plastic here. so. There is this metal inlay which basically goes over the top. It, it's a finishing piece. It's not CNC. There's metal there and there. That, in my opinion, is plastic. That centre, that there. Is that plastic or is that metal? To me, that's plastic. That plastic, uh, do you know what? I'm not sure. It's definitely plastic there. Let's just get this bit of a sharper driver on it. That's got to be plastic. I think that's plastic. That's how it feels. It's got like a metally layer over the top. As for the rest of the bits... It's hard for me to say 100%, so I'm not convinced. No, that's not. That's plastic. Is it? Actually, no, that might be metal. Okay, so that's plastic. That is absolutely plastic. That outer housing that goes up to the is plastic. And then you've got these metally bits around it. So what you've got here is a sort of combination of CNC and plastic. What I'm going to say, though, is for me, the bits that are metal are bling and the bits that are functional are plastic. And that is a bit of a shame. I, if you're going to call it a CNC gimbal, it should all be CNC on the majority of the moving parts. It's something I'm going to criticise them for because 
I would do the same if it was any other radio and I'm going to have to criticise Jumper for it as well. Okay, now looking at the Express LRS module, you can see the antenna is up there. We've got the cable that comes down and then there is the module attached to this heat sink that it goes there and then there's that fan on the back that keeps that cool. Really nice, simple setup. Now, if we just remove the sticker on this, if I just peel it back, what you can see there is we have our ESP32, we have our front end RF, so we've got our SX chipset, and then we've most likely got our power amplifier. In fact, it is a power amplifier. I can see the Skyworks logo down there, and that is what's given us up to that one watt of RF output. If we then look around, we've got our little button down here, and then we've got the built-in Wi-Fi antenna there for the Wi-Fi functionality. Now, unfortunately, once again, we have a module that does not have the backpack function as standard. It is something we've seen recently from Jumper. Unfortunately, they're one of the brands that hasn't been installing backpack as standard on their Express LRS systems. However, that doesn't mean you can't modify it to have it in the future. There is a little jumper header down here. Not sure what that is. I suspect that is a UART that is going to allow you to add backpack if you wanted to. Other than that, there's not a lot more to say other than what you can see labeled here. That says TCXO, which means it does have a temperature controlled oscillator, which is good to see. That's going to give you the fantastic frequency accuracy on the Express LRS carriers. And really, that's about all there is to show you with regards to the Express LRS built-in module. Overall, just looking around the radio, the quality of the board does look very nice. No complaints here at all. I think it's definitely on par with what we've seen from other manufacturers. Now, as I mentioned, you can swap these corner buttons out for a switch like I have here, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do next. So we're going to replace this corner button with the switch, and we'll get the gimbal out as well to take a look at. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is get this undone. You want to watch that screw as you do it because it's going to want to come out. There we go. Let me just tip them over. You want to make sure you don't lose them because you may need them in the future. Now, unfortunately, we're going to need to snip this cable tie. I'm going to very carefully get in there with a pair of snips and try not to cut any of the cables as I'm doing it. You do need to take care when doing that. Get that out as well. There we are. Then we're going to undo that one there, and then that releases that momentary button. Now, as I've said, they do include these two corner pieces, which go in as a replacement for the standard one. So that just goes in like that over the top. What we want to do, though, before we do that is replace it. Now, these are both two-position switches. I don't think there's a three. No, they're both twos. So we're going to want them. That locks in quite nicely like that. And then we're going to want the nut. And install that over the top. And then what I'll do is I'll tighten that properly once we've got the radio back together. Here we go. That's now done. That's installed. So then we can simply fit this shoulder piece onto the radio, just like that. And then we're gonna to want to just plug that into the existing connector that we had before. And then all we're gonna do is put a small cable tie on the wires there to hold it in place. Okay, now just to share with you my thoughts on the T14 from Jumper. Now, just to be crystal clear, they did send me this radio over for free. However, they've not paid me to make this video. They've not seen this video before it's been published. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Now, before we talk about my thoughts, we should talk about price. Because whilst this radio is very similar to the Boxer, it is actually cheaper than the Boxer when looking around. In the UK, you can get this with the standard gimbals, the Hall ones, which is not the CN for around £75 and I've seen it for around £85.90 with the CNC ones. Looking on places like AliExpress, it seems to be around $100 for the basic version or between $110 and $120 for the CNC Hall Edition. That 
does make this radio cheaper than the Radio Master Boxer. And when talking about what this radio is like compared to it, that should be taken into account. Something else that should also be taken into account with this radio is that it is available in multiple different RF versions. So for instance, you can get this in 2.4 gigs Express RS like I have here, but you can also get it in 915 as well. So that does set it apart from some of the other radios. Radio Master tend to only make their radios with the 2.4 gigs Express RS system built in, whereas Jumper tend to make theirs with either 2.4 or 915868 and we even then have the radios with the built-in Gemini function like I showed you on the T20 earlier. Okay, so what do I think about the T14? Well, there is a lot to like here. You have an Edge TX based radio with Express RS built in, supports up to one watt of RF output on 2.4 or you can get it in that 915 mode as well. We have a nice big OLED display which is a lot nicer to look at than the LCD equivalents. We've got that really good built-in foldable antenna antenna which is better than pretty much on any of the other radios and it has most of the switches and buttons most people will need two twos two threes two potentiometers corner buttons as well Whilst there's a lot good though, not everything is perfect. Whilst I've said the fit and feel is good, it doesn't quite feel up to the quality of the likes of the Boxer. For instance, the plastics are okay, but they do feel a little bit scratchy. The handle on the back is pretty awful and feels like it's going to break at any moment. The quality of the audio from the speaker is really not very good on this radio. And these gimbals, whilst are labelled CNC, they're really not full CNC, although it should be said that Jumper are not calling them full CNC, but the metalwork feels more about bling than actual functionality. One other thing just to mention is whilst this does have those multiple versions of Express LRS, it doesn't have the backpack functionality, so again that is something that Jumper are letting themselves down with on this handset. However, as I mentioned at the start, the radio is cheaper than the Radio Master equivalent and you are getting something with very similar features. Personally, it isn't quite up there with the Boxer, but there are elements on this that are better. The corner buttons are more comfortable, you can convert them easier into switches as well. And Jumper are also including that case with this like Radio Master R as well. As for should you buy this over the Radio Master Boxer, that's a very complicated question because it really comes down to what brand you want a radio from and what you're looking to get. For me, if you're after a radio that you're not really interested in upgrading in the future, this is absolutely worth a look. If you were just going to buy it and have it as it comes, I don't think you'd have too many complaints. If you did though want a radio where you want to be able to like buy those full CNC gimbals, the full metal button switch set, the LED rings, that's where the Boxer really comes into its own. The Boxer is a phenomenal radio and what Jumper are trying to do here is steal some of the market share away from Radio Master with what they've got there and I do think they've done a decent job but they haven't quite made this as premium a radio as the Boxer is. Things just like that plastic handle on the back just let this radio down a little bit but at the end of the day you do get what you pay for. Overall, I don't think anyone would be disappointed with this radio, but I also don't think it's going to blow anyone away either. Now, that is pretty much it from me on this one. I'm really interested in knowing what you think. If you have any questions, put them down below and I will try and answer them. There will be a link to this radio in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to Jumper for sending this one over. If you're interested in getting yourself one, please do consider checking it out. Finally, I just want to say if you are interested in supporting the channel to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do also check out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee in the description. It is only through the support of my patrons are we able to keep making content on this channel and if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making videos like this in the future please do consider checking it out i want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons on this channel we recently just hit 50k subscribers and i would not have been able to keep doing this without the support of the patrons and if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep doing it in the future please do consider checking it out anyway that's it from me please do let me know what you think stay safe i will speak to you soon